Michael Popak, Legal AF. It is obvious what the United States Supreme Court MAGA right wing is doing. They're benefiting Donald Trump by continuing to delay the issuance of the decision one way or the other about whether Donald Trump or anybody in the future has immunity from criminal prosecution. What am I talking about? It was 114 days ago that we had the oral argument before the United States Supreme Court on on full briefing as to whether a, 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 a person who was a president at the time who tries to cling to power and commits acts outside of his presidential authority and, and office can be tri- can be indicted and tried for crimes. Yes or no. We heard the oral argument. We know that there is a group on the right-wing Supreme Court that is going to find some of Donald Trump's actions, which culminated in the Jan 6 insurrection and beyond, to be immune from prosecution and others, other, but other acts that he's committed not immune. But the timing of the issue is what's going on here now, and the MAGA right-wing is, is benefiting Donald Trump by not allowing this case to go back to Judge Chutkin and be tried. We're 114 days from oral argument to use a historical benchmark. It took about 56 days or less than 60 days for a prior United States Supreme Court to make a ruling in United States versus Nixon. This Supreme Court, for no good reason, has now let three separate weeks go by in which which they have entered and issued orders and decisions of the court in every case but the one the American people deserve and demand, which is about immunity in the D.C. election interference case. And at the rate we're going, I'm just going to put it on my cards right on the table. Judge Chutkin has already announced that if she ever gets the case back and the case, uh, the pin gets taken out of her case and she can continue the D.C. election interference case, four counts against Donald Trump. And hold that thought on the four counts for a minute. She will give the pro- the defense 90 additional days for when she gets it back to prepare the case. That's how long she calculated the case was uh, uh, was left to be uh, prepared at the time the immunity stopped the case in its tracks. So she's going to add plus 90. At, because we just passed yet another week, and it looks like the earliest this decision is going to come out is June 28th, if not the following week in July, What does that mean? Well, let's just use July as the benchmark. July 1 is the benchmark. And even if the judge got the case back and and there were certain aspects of the indictment that survived this immunity immunity ruling by the United States Supreme Court, let's say she calls everybody back into court by mid-July, August, September, October. We're now in mid-October. I know we all think about every every presidential election, there's an October surprise, something that either candidate has to deal with in terms of some sort of eruption or scandal or or, uh, or event. Yes, I understand that. But an, a, a trial in October leading into a November election is likely not to happen and certainly won't be completed before the November election. So people will go to the polls only knowing, only knowing that Donald Trump was convicted of 34 felony counts of fraud in furtherance of another crime in New York. And they don't have the benefit of knowing whether he also committed a a crime related to the last time he refused to transition power to Joe Biden. It's clear. There's no other way to interpret this 114-day delay. By all rights, that doesn't even include the more than 60-day delay that happened between the time that the D.C. uh, Court of Appeals, three-judge panel, issued their ruling denying immunity for Donald Trump and his conduct. And now I know that court took a month. Then there's a 60 to 90-day gap. Then there was briefing. Then we had oral argument, but it was way back in April. And now we're here almost in July. The Supreme Court can issue rulings quicker if they want to, and it's obvious that it's being hung up now. Sure, it's an important decision. It has not only constitutional import, it has legacy and history um, uh, that it has to it has to align with. And so I'm sure there are a number of what, what appears to be a dissent, a concurrence, a majority opinion, multiple majority opinions that are all being circulated as there's a vote lobbying going on to see who can get and who can count to five, five votes to issue one of these orders. I get it. But, but the uh, tortoise-like pace at which 
the MAGA Supreme Court is moving and foot dragging is obviously to benefit Donald Trump. They don't want this decision to land to impact this particular um, election. It is obvious. And they're, and they're also holding, talk about retentive, they're also holding another decision, which likely will be dropped the same day. That decision is whether um, Donald Trump and 300 other Jan 6 insurrectionists were properly charged with the crime of obstruction of an official proceeding because they interfered with the, with the counting and the certification of electoral votes on Jan 6. The law on its face clearly applies, but we're going to see if they're going to strip away the um, this this charge, although Donald Trump certainly has other facts as indicted that would support him being prosecuted for that particular claim, that particular crime, even if the other 300 insurrectionists who uh, didn't, uh, uh, who did not uh, get their hands on the ballots, if you will, on Jan 6, despite their best efforts, um, don't. I mean, for instance, Donald Trump did participate in the generation of fake elector certificates, which he tried to have to be substituted and recognized for the real ones. And that would seem to go right to the heart of obstruction of an official proceeding. And in a way that the Jan 6 defendants who attack the Capitol don't. So, but that those two decisions are going to come out. Now, they always find a way to benefit Donald Trump also in timing. Here's two, here's two scary thoughts. There's two other things that the Supreme Court could do. And I, when I say Supreme Court, just here, right-wing MAGA Supreme Court, the six to three majority. They could ask for re-argument, another delay tactic. They could say, well, we had that or we had that oral argument. We did the briefing, but we got stuck as a Supreme Court. We just can't figure out and reconcile. We need more briefing and argument over a different period, over a different issue. And so you do more briefing. And uh, you know, we might pick it up in October during our next term. I mean, there's no requirement that the even though the case has been briefed and argued, that it be decided in the term. It's it's tradition, it's history. There's some aspects of the Judiciary Act that suggest that you need to make these rulings. But courts don't respect terms at all at the lower level. Uh, you know, you can wait four months, six months, two years, three years on a decision. So, so they could ask for re-argument. They could post it to re-argument, set out a, a mini briefing schedule about another issue that popped into their head. And this thing is now off and running until the October term, the new term that starts in October, the first Monday in October. Or on their own, sua sponte, although it wasn't briefed, they could decide that the special counsel doesn't have jurisdiction or was improperly appointed or illegally delegated authority to him, which is a major issue down in Mar-a-Lago as raised by MAGA right-wing lawyers. They could, the Supreme Court, to say, we have another problem that we've identified, and they're allowed to do that. They can say, we don't think the special counsel was properly appointed. We want briefing on that. Delay, delay, delay. Even at the rate they're going, even if they don't go the route of asking for re-argument and new briefing, even if they don't on their own try to raise the issue of the special counsel's appointment and whether he's properly funded or not under, under uh, the delegation from the, you know, from the Merrick Garland Department of Justice. Even if that is not addressed, just the fact that at the earliest, they decided that they're going to put that opinion, which is probably completed already, although it hasn't leaked out yet, they're going to put that at the very end, as they, as I predicted, before they leave for their summer vacation, so they get out of the country because they're cowards. Uh, you know, until the, until until it's wheels up on Sam Alito and Clarence Thomas's junkets out of the out of the country on the um, on the on the dole of Federalist Society MAGA fundraisers, they're not going to issue that opinion or those two opinions because it's so divisive, and they know they're in the wrong. And so, if it's next week, the twenty eighth, it could roll over to right before Fourth of July. How ironic would that be? Um, and certainly they could decide, well, we don't want to issue it because the debates are coming up. Maybe we'll do it after the debates. You know, there's, again, no timer, no requirement that we can point to or force them to issue their decision at any other interval or any other time cycle other than what they, as the United States Supreme Court, decide to do. I know it's frustrating. I know it's it's uh, it's it's much consternation is generated by their ability to run their own docket, but they can and they will. And they already have. The fact that I'm talking about this at the end of June, that they haven't yet issued the decision, as we watch all the other decisions come out about gun rights, about abortion again, 
about uh, uh, rights you know, to a fair trial, about tax issues. All those decisions all came flying out. You know, we're still waiting on about um, about nine or 10 more decisions, but the immunity is what everybody wants. Let's be fair. That's the one that the public demands. I mean, and so, you know, they've, they've just kind of slow fed us. They've been feeding us, spoon feeding us these Supreme Court decisions, almost like they're trying to rebuild their own credibility uh, as, a, as a court, as their integrity and credibility lies in tatters. And as Chief Justice Roberts circles the drain of history as one of the worst chief justices we've ever had. Um, you know, just on the decision making already, they listed a whole bunch of, you know, nine zero and eight one and seven two and a couple of six three more divisive ones. But we know why they did that. They did that to try to show, well, see, we get along. We get along on some of these issues. As they as they then F the society, talk about AF, AF the society and our country, our constitutional democracy and republic with their next batch. Uh, again. This is like a hostage crisis. It's a what's being held hostage is America. It's 114 days so far and counting hostage crisis as they hold up the immunity decision to benefit Donald Trump. And do the math. Add 90 days to whenever Judge Chutkin finally gets the case back on whatever way, shape, or form it is going to be after the Supreme Court majority is done with it. And if she's got to do further um, uh, evidentiary work evidentiary hearings because of the direction and mandate by her bosses at the Supreme Court, That's then then forget July. Then July is over. July will be briefing and that evidentiary hearing to try to figure out how to apply the uh, teachings and the decision and the orders of the Supreme Court. And now we're into August and now forget it. Uh, and then if Donald Trump somehow restores his presidency, that case is over. We'll live forever, the precedent, about the case against Donald Trump federally will be over. And then we'll have to see what happens to the uh, state court cases. I'm going to continue to follow and drill down on issues like the United States Supreme Court. And they're obviously bending over backwards to benefit Donald Trump. They was like, oh, we don't want to sell your hands with politics. We don't want to be involved with you are involved with politics. You picked the president back in 2005 to four by picking Bush over Gore and stopping a ballot count. They did that in 38 days, 38 days to pick a president. 56 days to decide on Nixon and his criminality and issues related to him. And now we're at 114 days and counting to figure out whether somebody that committed crimes while he was president to try to cling to power doesn't have immunity from criminal prosecution. Come on, enough. Every Wednesday and Saturday, we break it down just like this on a, on a uh, podcast we named four years ago, prepare, apparently for a reason. We must have had a crystal ball. Legal AF. And if you don't know why we named it that, come on Wednesdays and Saturdays. You'll find out. 8 p.m. Eastern time right here on this YouTube channel. Free subscribe. Don't have to pay a membership fee at all. And then you can listen to us on all audio podcast platforms of your choice. If you like what I'm doing, leave me a thumbs up and a comment. It helps. It's not ego. It's algorithms. It keeps this on the air, this content on the air. Go over to Midas Touch YouTube. Look for Michael Popak, contributor, and playlist. You'll find my entire body of work. It's about 1,200 uh, hot takes, just like this one at the intersection of law and politics. And if you like that and you want to learn more about the law at the intersection, we're doing a Patreon that with exclusive video content only for members. It's at patreon.com slash legal af patreon.com slash legal af you'll get exclusive content about the intersection of law and politics constitutional law and civil law uh reproductive rights women's rights um the rights of the accused the rights of uh uh people who are uh, voters um and civil rights and procedural law versus uh, substantive law, federal versus state, all of that. We break it down for you one place exclusively on the on patreon.com slash legal AF. So until my next hot take, until my next legal AF, until my next Patreon exclusive content, this is Michael Popak reporting. Heary, heary, legal AF law breakdown is now in session. Go beyond the headlines and get a deep dive into the important legal concepts you need to know and we discuss every day on legal AF exclusive content you won't find anywhere else all for the price of a couple of cups of coffee join us at patreon.com slash legal af that's patreon.com slash legal af